Hey everybody, we are looking at section 8.4, which is angles of elevation and depression. Okay, angles and elevation or depression, the most important thing that you need to know is that they come from a horizontal line. So an angle of elevation comes from the horizontal line and looks upward. An angle of elevation, or excuse me, angle of depression comes from a horizontal line and looks downward. So if we look at the plane, and like the air traffic controller here, the plane up in the sky will, if he's looking straight ahead, he can't see the air traffic control tower. When he looks down, he will see the tower. So he's looking at an angle of depression. The people in the tower, if they're looking straight ahead, they can't see the plane. They have to look up to actually see the plane. So that is an angle of elevation. Okay. Now, because the horizontal lines are parallel, our angles of elevation and depression are always going to be congruent. So let's take a look. And I want to label these as an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. So if I look at angle three here, angle three is the horizontal line and it connects the hawk and the uh, guy over here. So from the hawk, the angle opens downward from the horizontal. So that means that angle E, or excuse me, angle three is an angle of depression. Okay. Angle four goes from the man's viewing level and opens up toward the hawk. So the guy has to look up to see the hawk. So it is an angle of elevation. All right, go ahead and try these two on your own. Pause your video, and then we will label these as the angle of elevation and depression in just one second. All right, so check your answers. Five is an angle of depression because from the man, it is opening down toward the tree. And six is elevation because we're looking at the top of the tree, it's the horizontal line, and opening up towards the man. All right. So any questions on that, go ahead and make note of it somewhere on your notes. All right, example two. I have a lighthouse keeper is at the top of a 120 foot tall lighthouse with the base at sea level and he spots a small fishing boat. The angle of depression is five degrees. I wanna know the horizontal distance between the base of the lighthouse and, and the boat. So the most important thing here is when you have problems like this, you have to draw the picture. There's no getting around that. The first thing you have to do is to draw your picture. So here's my picture. I have a lighthouse and a person out in a boat, okay? So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm going to draw in my triangle, okay? So this is going to be our triangle. Now, the worker at the top of the lighthouse is looking out and has got an angle of depression of five degrees. So that means he is looking out over the water and then he has to look down five degrees to see the boat. All right, so this lighthouse is 120 feet tall. And I wanna know the horizontal distance. So this right here is the horizontal distance. All right, so when we're looking here, remember what we said, because these are both horizontal lines, they are parallel. So your angle of depression and your angle of elevation are the same. So my angle of elevation is five degrees. A lot of the time when you're doing these types of problems, it is easier to reverse it and use the angle of elevation. So if the angle of depression from the lighthouse to the boat was five degrees, then the angle of elevation from the boat to the lighthouse is also five degrees. One of the number one mistakes that people make is that they try to put the five degrees right here in this corner rather than actually outside the triangle. 
So if you do angle of elevation, you are less likely to make that mistake. And then from here, it's all trig. It's what we've been doing for two days, all right? So, or for the last two lessons. So what we're looking at here, 120, we're gonna look at this angle. So this is the angle that I'm going from. 120 is my opposite side. The X that I'm looking for is my adjacent sign. So when I look at my Sokotoa, opposite and adjacent is the tangent. So I'm gonna do the tangent of my angle, which is five degrees, is equal to my opposite side, which is 120, over my adjacent side, which is X. My variable is in the denominator, so I'm going to be dividing by my trig function. So X is gonna equal 120 divided by the tangent of five. And when I put that in my calculator and I round to the nearest foot, so I'm going to the nearest whole number, I'm gonna get 1,372 feet. Okay, so again, draw your picture, label your triangle, and then pick your trig function. Let's do another one. We have a viewer is watching a, hair, a hot air balloon ascend, which means what? Ascend means go up. So he's watching the balloon rise. All right, the viewer's line of sight forms a 20 degree angle with the ground when the balloon is 1,200 feet above the ground. So let's take a look at what that picture looks like, all right? We have a balloon and somebody looking up at the balloon. So my line of sight, I'm gonna draw, we know we're gonna need the triangle, right? Oop, I don't want it dotted, hold on. Let me fix this. We're gonna draw the triangle. All right, so the balloon is 1,200 feet above the ground. So that's where my 1,200 is gonna go, okay? The viewer's line of sight forms a 20 degree angle with the ground. So 20 degrees goes down here. I wanna know how far the viewer is from, how far is the viewer from where the balloon started its ascent? So where it started its ascent was on the ground. Okay, it started on the ground and then it rose up. So this is the distance here that I'm looking for. So what we're gonna do here is again, this is the angle that I'm looking at. And I'm going to label my triangle. 1200 is opposite. I'm looking for the adjacent. So that again is my tangent. So I'm gonna do the tangent of my angle, which is 20, equals my opposite, which is 1200, over my adjacent, which is x. Again, my variable's in the denominator, so I'm gonna divide, and it's gonna be 1200 divided by the tangent of 20. Let's go ahead and round this one to the nearest whole number as well, and it's gonna be 3,297 feet when you put that in your calculator. All right, if you have any questions on that, make sure that you do these um, or that you write it down somewhere. That is the main part of the lesson, guys. It's just making sure that we understand where that angle of elevation goes, where that angle of depression goes, all right? Everything else is just what we've been doing for the last two days. All right, the only thing that's new today is drawing that triangle and trying to figure out where things go. All right, so that being said, the rest of this lesson is practice problems and on your own. So go ahead and try these two, pause your video, and try these two on your own. Okay, so let's check your answers. All right, here we have a spectator is looking up at a building at an angle of 25 degrees to the top of the building. So the 25 degree angle is gonna go down here, okay? The tells us that the building is 500 feet away. So the 500 goes down here on the horizontal. 
You want to know how tall is the building, which is the vertical. So that's opposite and adjacent, which is tangent. All right, so make sure you use tangent for number one. If we look at number two, we have a worker looks down from the top of a bridge that is 240 feet above the river. So the bridge is 240 feet above the river. So that's this vertical distance here. Okay. He sees a barge in the water, which is one of those big boats that carries a lot of stuff. Okay. A lot of times they carry like shipping containers and whatnot. And it tells us that the angle of depression is 60 degrees. So that means this 60 degrees goes on the outside. All right. Now, that means that the angle of elevation is also 60 degrees. So I'm working from this 60 degree angle. The 240 is the opposite. The distance to the base of the bridge, which is the horizontal distance, is my x. So again, I'm using tangent, okay? But remember, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I could also use, this is my long leg, or this is my long leg and my short leg. Actually, I lied, that's the other way around. 60, this is the long leg, this is the short leg. Picture's nowhere near drawn to scale, okay? So I could use that my long leg is my short leg times the square root of three since it is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay? Either way is perfectly fine. You can use the tangent or you can use your long equals short square root of three because of your type of triangle that you have. Again, any questions, make sure you write that down. All right, let's go ahead and do these two on your own. All right, please know that this first one here, this number three, is a little bit of a challenge. Know that you need to draw two triangles to get your um, answer. All right, so go ahead and pause your video. Okay, let's take a look at the answers. So we have a helicopter pilot is hovering 500 feet above the road. So he is 500 feet up above the road. The pilot looks down at two cars using 24 degrees and 28 degrees of angles of depression. So the bigger one here is going to be 28. The smaller one's going to be 24. Again, I'm going to bring that down to the angles of elevation because they are congruent. All right. I want to know how far apart are the cars. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm finding this horizontal distance. I'm finding the distance between, we're going to use the red truck here and the high, where the helicopter would be above the ground and from where the helicopter would be over to the, car, the first teal car here. Once I find those two distances, then I am going to subtract them. Okay, so this one, again, is a little bit of a challenge. I fully understand that. Um, to really get what the problem is saying, but make sure that as you look at it now that you do understand what's going on. Okay, then I'm looking at my angles of elevation. Okay, after we get that the depression and elevation are congruent, we ignore the depression angles because they're outside the triangle. All right. So from here, opposite adjacent, we're using tangent. All right. Number four, we are flying a kite. The string of the kite is 350 or 360 feet long. Okay, so that means that the person holding the kite, they have a, the string length is 360, all right? It makes a 40 degree angle with the ground. We want to find the altitude that the kite is, okay? And we want to find the horizontal distance. So I want to find both the vertical X and the horizontal Y, and that's what we're going to get here, all right? So if you have any questions, please make sure you make note of that and ask me when next time you see me in class. Have a wonderful day.